Internet, how the heck are you? My name's Lou, and I make Linux videos, and I put them on the Internet. So hopefully by now you've already watched my Manjaro Linux review. If not, uh, it would be great if you guys took a, took a little time, watch that video, get my take on Manjaro Linux. And, you know, I mentioned in that particular review, one of the things I like so much about Manjaro is they've made Arch Linux, which is something most... Uh, Linux users would consider uh, for the more advanced. There is a lot of manual configuration that goes into installing Arch Linux. I think Manjaro has taken a really nice out of the box approach to getting an Arch based system. So I thought I could show you guys how to install Manjaro Linux. Hopefully, that it may take some of the fear out of it and um, open you guys up to some new possibilities in terms of a Linux desktop. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I have the uh, XFCE 64-bit edition. Now for um, you know for the for the benefit of saving time I've got it burnt onto a DVD which I usually use to install onto my system. So instead of the ISO which actually would uh, speed up the installation a little bit I'm just gonna run the install off the DVD. So why don't we fire up VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. I think fitting, we should probably just call it Manjaro. I'll give it uh, four gigs of RAM. Eight gigs should be perfect. Uh, display, enable 3D acceleration. Let's start this thing up. And All right, the disk is spinning. Really, really attractive um, screen here. This thing looks awesome. So you're gonna see now uh, in the Manjaro Linux uh, boot menu, basically, you can start Manjaro Linux. You can start it with the non-free drivers, um, or when you start, when you just do the basic start, that's with all the free drivers. So um, <clears throat> if you use this option here. What it's going to do is it's going to detect your hardware and install the appropriate um, proprietary driver. So, for instance, I've got a, wi a Broadcom Wi-Fi card in, in my system, and I'm also using an AMD uh, graphics card. So there's a, a, a hardware detection tool built within the installer. It's going to detect what I'm using and install the appropriate um, proprietary driver. So let's go with this because that's going to cut down on some post installation things that we need to do so we'll start it with the non-free drivers it's going to load up the kernel now once again uh, I'd like to mention that Manjaro has done an amazing job really simplifying the Arch Linux installation process now it's still command line but for those of you who have ever installed Arch some of it's going to look familiar to you, but it's again taken a lot of the the you know manual configurations uh, out of the whole process and made it really really user friendly. One of the other nice things is, say for instance you don't want to use one of the um, supported desktop environments like XFCE, OpenBox, or uh, Cinnamon, you can do a net install, which I've actually tried, and I installed GNOME. So you can get the net installation, and then um, now uh, Manjaro's wiki has a really nice how-to step-by-step, you know, get any of the other desktop environments installed on top of the Manjaro base system. So, you know, you always al also have that option. And also it, what it'll do is it'll give you a much more slimmed down uh, installation. So if you don't like some of the pre-installed software that comes with Manjaro, you can always do a net install and select um, the software you would like to use. All right, so we're uh, should be booting right into the desktop here pretty soon. Again, this is a very very quick process. You'll be surprised how fast this actually goes. It's it's probably one of the quickest installs of of any distro um, that I've ever actually installed. Now, if you're going to do a net install, what's really nice is I have my Nexus 7, which I had the wiki, the Manjaro wiki up. 
again, there's not a lot of steps, but it was nice to be able to have have my Nexus 7 with the wiki up to do to follow the step by step. Okay, so this is uh, what you're greeted with here for the Manjaro um, live media. Right here, you've got the CLI installer. You've also got a beginner user guide. So, you know, this is going to go through, you know, certain steps involved in, you know, getting the installation done, so on and so forth. So, why don't we go ahead and launch the CLI installer? All right, welcome to the Manjaro Linux installation framework. There's two versions of this installer the stable um, and the testing installer. So we're going to go with the stable installer. So option one is use stable installer. Okay, we're going to set the time and date. I'm going to go with UTC. We're going to go down to America. I'm going to go to New York. Disk preparation. We're going to go with option one, assisted preparation. We're going to erase the whole disk. Uh, okay, so the size of the boot partition, we're going to leave at 512. Um, for the swap partition, I don't know, we'll go with uh, 500 meg. For the root partition, we'll go with, I don't know, what, 6? Six? 6 gig? And home partition will be just over a gig. That's fine. Now for the f file system format, we're going to go with ext4. So this tells us that for our root file system as well as our home partition, we're going to use ext4. That's fine. It's going to tell us that the hard drive is going to be completely erased. We'll proceed. Okay, it's finished doing the partitioning. We're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to install the system. Now there was, while this is going here, there was actually just an update to Manjaro. Um, what I like, if you come over to the wiki, it's going to tell you what's new, the five latest changes. I really like that. Um, so it gives you the five latest changes to Manjaro. Um, and as you can see here, it was updated on March 10th. The latest stable release is 0 0.8.4. is released on February 25th for the XFCE Cinnamon and Open Box as well as the Net Edition. Now the latest community editions of Manjaro are Mate LXDE and E17. And so 0 0.8.4 is the latest update because um, the live installer which we have here is actually 0 0.8.3 and again I mentioned that wiki if you come over to the Manjaro um, the Manjaro wiki again uh, you can get a lot of really good information like uh, desktop environments you know it tells you all about the desktop environments that they're using um, software management, system, Let's see how are we doing here on the install, we're almost done. Optimizing laptop power consumption, enable touchpad and vertical, uh, vertical and horizontal scrolling of course for laptops.
really really nice see i mean this is this is one of the things i really like you know you don't go to one of these linux distros websites and it's just this archaic web page you know again they make this look like a a modern professional piece of software i really like that you can tell they take a lot of pride in in and what they're doing here and it looks great so let's see how we're doing all right good so the installation succeeded it installed the base system as well as xfce now it's going in config configuring also which is our sound and it's also going to try and detect our hardware during this process as well to see what we're running because we loaded the non-free version as you can see here MHWD is actually Manjaro's own tool for uh, detecting hardware and, and installing proprietary drivers. So you can see how it was doing that there. Now we're going to configure our system. We're going to set a root password. And we're going to set up users. And should we add this? Uh, should we give this user pseudo rights? Yes. Okay. You can set up additional users if you want. Uh, locale is fine. Key map is fine. Um, edit system configuration. We don't need to do any of that. For most people, you can just come right down to uh, this option and go back to the main menu. And now it's going to generate the locales. It's going to synchronize synchronize all the Pac-Man databases. Again, very very quick. I know I'm doing this in a virtual machine, and I'm also doing it off of a DVD. If you were using this off of a USB drive, it would fly. It'd be a lot lot faster. It's building the kernel right now. We're going to install the bootloader, uh, which is actually Grub2. It wants to install it on slash dev slash SDA1, which in my particular system, of course, not on the virtual box, but I do have two hard drives installed. So, um, you know, and I want my Grub bootloader on the, on the primary hard drive. So, you know, for most people, SDA or SDA1 is going to be what you want. So we're just going to hit yes. It's going to install Grub2 which installed successfully. Now we're going to quit. Literally, that's it. Install finished. You now have an Arch-based system installed on your, on your hardware. I mean, painless. So all you're really going to do now is we're going to reboot this machine. It's going to come back to the boot menu on the live disk. We're going to choose boot from hard disk. Boom, here we are. <laughs> that simple. So we're going to log in. All right, folks, here we are. This is what you will find on, you know what? Take this disc out. This is what you're going to find on your basic vanilla install. So this is what you'll be greeted with after you install the XFCE edition. Let's take the uh, the disc out. Put that away. All right. Okay. So what you're probably going to want to do is open up terminal and what I'll also do. Okay. We're going to want to run sudo pacman syy all right now what i want to do is put in my password and now this is going to synchronize all the package databases Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is sudo pacman syu. This is going to update the entire system. 
Do you want to cancel? No, no, no. Okay, so Pac-Man needs an update. We're going to say yes. We're going to proceed. Pac-Man is so ridiculously fast. I mean, compared to apt or even yum. Okay, so we're going to run that command one more time. So sudo pacman dash syu. Okay, so do we want to replace? All right, so here we go. This is the new update. So going from 0 0.8.3 all the way to 0 0.8.4, um, some of the updates here, as you can see, we got uh, QT4 replacing QT. Um, I'm interested here, Wayland, to see why Wayland's being installed. We got some uh, XFCE updates as well, so on and so forth. So, download size is 282 uh, megabytes installed will almost be a full gig. And that's that. So one of the things I want to do is run. Should be under system. Yep, G parted. And all right. So here are the partitions that were created during install. We've got a boot partition that was formatted in ext2, uh, 517 megabyte size. That's only used 38 meg. Swap partition, 500 meg, an ext4 partition for our root file system. We've only got, it was uh, about 6 gigs, so we've used about 4. And our home partition, which is about a little over a gig, and we've only used 62 meg. All right. For the sake of saving time, I am not going to install this update. But this is what you are greeted with. So if you're a first-time Manjaro user, I would highly suggest opening up your home directory, opening up the Manjaro folder. You've got two PDF documents in here, a beginner user guide, which I covered in my Manjaro review, as well as an XFCE user guide. So, you know, if you're new to Arch Linux or Manjaro Linux, I highly suggest using this uh, beginner guide. This is going to give you a lot of really useful information. Um, highly, highly suggest using this, and it'll get you started. Okay, now if you've never used XFCE, um, so you know, I highly suggest using that as well. Now, also, if you are unfamiliar or just not comfortable with the terminal, Manjaro Linux also, you know, you've got this little icon up here install or check for updates. If you don't want to have to mess with terminal commands, just use that tool, and boom, you can, you can do updates like that. All right, so real easy. It shows you everything that's being updated in the file size. So there you go. And that is how easy it is to install Manjaro Linux. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If so, uh, give the video a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. And until next time, we'll talk to you guys later.